On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks training camp roster is now down to just 29 players after another wave of cuts yesterday. I'll go over who's still around, who's headed back to Rockford, and then I'll also wrap things up by unveiling number one on my top 10 prospects list. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. <laughs> Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Wednesday, October 5th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing, then please be sure to go and show some support first by following the podcast. Go and rate the show with five stars if you like what you're hearing today as well. And if you're tuning in through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify, then you can also go and leave me a review. And the best part about it all is that it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast. Go and follow the show right now, and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then you got to be sure to go and check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube, because every episode moving forward, folks, is going to have a video uploaded to YouTube as well. So if you haven't done so yet, <clears throat> please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. Go and ring the bell, turn on the push notifications too, and that way you can be notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for tuning into another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. To open things up on the show this morning, another day gone. Another round of cuts made by the Chicago Blackhawks as their training camp roster now technically <clears throat> stands at just 29 players. And of course, yesterday, uh, as I already talked about, Lucas Reichel was among several of those players reassigned to the Rockford Ice Hogs, along with Isaac Phillips, Josiah Slavin, uh, summer standout Cole Gutman was sent back to Rockford as well, which was uh, not too surprising, but... A little interesting to see that some other guys were kept around uh, instead of him. And as for Reichel, I mean, obviously he's the big one, right? Uh, But as I mentioned yesterday as well, while I do believe he is one of the top 12 forwards in the Blackhawks organization right now, if not already uh, one of the top six, um, the Blackhawks, their plan is to be uber patient with him. We know that's something that Kyle Davidson has emphasized and been harping on since becoming the general manager. That's making sure guys are more than ready to jump onto the scene, not just a hundred percent ready, but more than that, they have to fully be ready to come in and make an impact, not just be a bystander and not just be someone who's up getting NHL games for experience. No, he wants them fully ready to make an impact when they do get called up to the scene. So Yeah, it's tough that Lucas Reichel isn't going to be on the opening night roster, but still plenty of benefits to let him go down to Rockford. He's going to be the man down there. He'll be their top line center. He'll play in all situations. And honestly, that's kind of the group of guys that he probably should be establishing chemistry with rather than what's on the Blackhawks roster right now. Because look, with this being a full-blown rebuild and the team looking three, four, five years down the road, not many of these guys who are already on the NHL roster are still going to be around. And the guys in Rockford, those are the players that the front office and the coaching staff is hopeful is going to be able to kind of help change the scenery, change how everything has gone for the Blackhawks these past few years and be part of the future, be pieces of the puzzle moving forward. So it does make sense to have Lucas Reichel kind of establishing more chemistry with those guys and also kind of being the leader down there. They'll rely on him heavily, had a really impressive season last year, of course, a point per game guy when he was healthy for the Ice Hogs. So still a lot of benefits for Lucas Reichel going to Rockford. But yeah, it is. I get why Blackhawks fans would be frustrated why he's not going to be playing on opening night. Um, But at the end of the day, he'll be there sometime. Look, there's no doubt about it. Lucas Reichel is going to be up in the NHL level sometime soon. 
the Blackhawks are just making sure it's the exact right time. And I can't really blame them for having that mentality. I still think there's plenty for Lucas Reichel, uh, plenty of positives to Lucas Reichel going back to the Rockford Ice Hogs to open up the year. In addition to Reichel and the others that <clears throat> I already talked about yesterday on the show getting sent back to Rockford, we also saw uh, Mike Hardman and Jakob Galvis assigned to the Ice Hogs later on in the afternoon as well. And Hardman, he's someone who's been out, missed all of the games so far here in the preseason due to an injury. Hopefully he'll be able to get back there sometime soon because I do think he has some bottom six upside the way that he plays the game, but just hasn't been able to showcase it really at all throughout training camp. So uh, not really surprising whatsoever to hear that he's going down to Rockford. He still has uh, a lot to prove before becoming an NHLer. And then for Galvis, he too was someone that I did expect to go to Rockford. I had him in the Rockford group when I kind of, excuse me, broke down the Blackhawks roster a few days ago. Um, and I feel like he's just kind of behind in the pecking order to Regula, Vlasic, Isaac Phillips, maybe even Philip Rose, since he's still around on the NHL roster at this point. But uh, Galvis is someone who, I think the Hawks, the Ice Hogs, they already kind of know what he is. Didn't get a lot of reps in the preseason because I think they wanted to see more of other guys, but that still shouldn't deter you away from Jakob Galvis. I think he could be an NHLer still one day. Uh, he's just got a really simple game to him and doesn't do anything flashy, but tends to usually be in the right spots and make all the right plays. So another big year for him down in Rockford, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, at some point throughout the regular season. Before I move on to segment two, <clears throat> the last thing I wanted to talk about here real quick is how the Blackhawks, how Luke Richardson has kind of hit the blender in terms of his line pairings and uh, or his line combos and defensive pairings here in the past couple of days of practice. And the Blackhawks, obviously, they've had uh, three days in a, in a row off since their last preseason game on Sunday. They'll be back in action tomorrow night against the Minnesota Wild. And with what we've seen in practice the last few days, it does seem likely that these could be uh, the lines and pairings that Luke Richardson ends up rolling with. So I did want to mention this really quickly. The top line, again, we've seen things mixed up here. So we'll see how telling this is in the final week of camp, whether or not these could be realistic line combos and defensive pairings for opening night. But the past two days of practice, we've seen Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane loaded up together on the top line alongside Tyler Johnson. The second line has been Philip Kurashev. Max Domi and Taylor Radish, which is certainly interesting. By the way, I do want to mention that Andreas Athanasio was rotating in on that top line. So we'll see if he ends up playing tomorrow night. We'll see if they end up giving uh, the job to Tyler Johnson and keeping Tays and Kane on uh, the same line together. But definitely interesting that Athanasio, after not being able to capitalize on his opportunities with Kane and Domi thus far in the preseason, that he's kind of been bumped out as of, at a, as of the moment. Second line I mentioned, Kurashev, Domi, and Radish. The third line is Colton Dock, Sam Lafferty, and Mackenzie Entwistle. And Colton Dock's missed the majority of training camp here after suffering a concussion during the Tom Curver's Prospect Showcase. He's finally seems finally seems to be back. He's been taking part fully in practice the past two days. And with him missing training camp, I think this is just a way for the Blackhawks to get another couple of looks at him before sending him back to his junior club. Uh, he could actually get in there, get in the lineup tomorrow against Minnesota, but after that, I would expect him to get sent back to the Kelowna Rockets of the WHL. But great to hear, of course, that Colton Doc is back healthy and looks ready to suit up for some game action. Uh, we'll see if he ends up getting in there. The fourth line was Colin Blackwell, Reese Johnson, and Buddy Robinson. Jujar Kara, by the way, was rotating in on the second line while he's been dealing with an injury. And then on defense, we saw Jack Johnson and Seth Jones paired together, Alex Vlasic and Philip Rose, and then Riley Stillman and Alec Regula. Now, this is both without Connor Murphy and Caleb Jones and also Jake McCabe. So a really thin defense for the Blackhawks right now with a couple of guys banged up. Fortunately, Murphy's back injury sounds like it's day-to-day. -day. Jones' shoulder injury sounds like it's day-to-day. -day. And the surgery that Jake McCabe got, uh, not too long ago. It seems like he's already ahead of schedule and could be back sooner than all of us originally expected. So this isn't going to be the defense the Blackhawks roll with in the regular season. Uh, they should be getting a couple of guys back, but we'll see if this ends up being the lineup that uh, coach Luke Richardson winds up rolling with for tomorrow night's preseason game against the Minnesota Wild. 
All right, there are the latest updates out of Blackhawks training camp. Coming up in just a moment, I will get into who all was placed on waivers by the Hawks on Tuesday morning. But first, I need to talk to you all about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all of the latest football developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts on whatever game you want to place a wager on. BetOnline is also your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and game scores. It's both the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including the MLB, MMA, boxing, and even golf. So head on over to the website today, or you can also use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action right now. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Segment two today, let's talk about the four players that were placed on waivers by the Blackhawks yesterday because they're not waiver exempt anymore at this point of their careers, and that needs to happen. They need to go through waivers in order to be reassigned to the Rockford Ice Hogs. First, Luke Philp and Brett Sini. No surprise there. They were also in the Rockford bound group when I broke down the Blackhawks roster a few days ago. Haven't done all that much throughout training camp and are kind of career AHLers. So no surprise to see that uh, they're heading back down to Rockford. I don't expect either of them to be claimed off waivers. So I think they'll be, we'll be hearing that they're going down to Rockford here sometime rather soon. We actually might be getting a waiver update in the middle of the show. So uh, we'll see if that ends up happening. But uh, the other two players are definitely the more intriguing ones for the Chicago Blackhawks. Those were forward Dylan Sakura and defenseman and former first round pick Nicholas Bodan. And I got to start with Bodan here because obviously it's been a pretty big struggle for him over the last two years. I mean, wasn't even cracking the Ice Hogs lineup when they were in the Calder Cup playoffs last year. Definitely has fallen behind basically everyone in the pecking order. I didn't think he looked really good in his last preseason game. And it just feels like things aren't working out here for Nicholas Dan and Nicholas Bodan. And he might need a change of scenery at some point. And it's unfortunate because I really did believe in his offensive potential for sure. Like I always knew as a smaller defenseman, uh, not very big. Those were the defensive side of things was always going to be a little bit of an issue for him, but I thought he'd be able to make up for that with, what he was able to provide offensively and the way he can play in transition and also run a power play. Like even dating back to just a couple of years ago when he got a shot with the Blackhawks, I thought, you know, he did some of those things well and that that would give him an opportunity to make it in the NHL one day. But yeah, there are definitely serious concerns at this point about whether Nicholas Bodan is ever going to be an NHL or Um, we'll have to wait and see if he ends up getting claimed by another NHL club. I do kind of doubt it though, because they'd have to value Bodan as someone who's ready to be up on the NHL roster. Like if another team claimed him, if they wanted to send him to their minor league club, they'd have to place him on waivers again. And then the Blackhawks realistically could just get him back and then put him through waivers again. And it would end up being a whole game. So uh, I don't think anyone values Nicholas Bodan as an NHL right now. So for that reason, I personally don't think he's going to get claimed by another NHL club, but you never know. I mean, being a former first round pick, if there's another franchise out there who really believes in their developmental process and that they can get him back on the right track, I mean, a chance to get him for free might be worth the risk. So we'll see here shortly if Nicholas Bodan ends up getting claimed by another NHL club. But as I already mentioned, I personally doubt that happens. And then for Dylan Secura, I was just, a little surprised that uh, he wasn't kept around to be an extra forward for the Blackhawks to open up the regular season. I personally thought that made too much sense because while Sakura um, doesn't necessarily, I don't think have the talent to be an NHL or every day. I also feel like he doesn't have much to prove left at the AHL level. Now he's also going to go down there and potentially I think a good spot for him would be playing on the top line with Lucas Reichel and Michael Tepley. Those two had really good chemistry together last year. I think adding Sakura, who's known to be a really dominant player at the AHL level, I think that would be a great top line for the Rockford Ice Hogs. And his addition could help them tremendously in a push to the Calder Cup playoffs this season. But also I felt like Sakura had that game where 
you know, maybe the Blackhawks want their depth forwards to be guys who can play in the bottom six, and that's not Sakura's role. But I also thought the nice thing about him was if you needed someone who could come in there and provide a little bit of a skill game, have an offensive mindset, he's the perfect guy who doesn't need to be playing every night, but can come in there every now and then and kind of help in that specific area. For those reasons, I definitely thought Dylan Sakura was going to be kept as an extra forward to open up the season, but uh, I guess Luke Richardson didn't feel the same. And now uh, he's on waivers as the Blackhawks try to send him down to Rockford. Don't expect anyone to claim Dylan Sakura. I think the only one that we should be keeping an eye on until the announcements get made here sometime soon is Nicholas Bodam. He's the only one that could be worth a risk. And uh, we'll find out here shortly if Nicholas Bodan is going to be headed to Rockford or heading to his second NHL club of his career. Before I wrap up the show today, folks, I still have to unveil who comes in at number one on my Blackhawks summer 2022 top 10 prospects list. Before I do, though, if you're not all caught up on who led us to number one and who came in at numbers 10 through two, be sure to go and check out those videos first. I mean, it only makes sense to go in order, right? And I also made it super easy for you all to go and do this. You just got to go and click on my YouTube channel. You should all be watching the video version of today's episode anyway, rather than listening to the podcast. I already have a playlist made on the top of my channel. Just go click on playlists. One of the first ones you'll see will be the top 10 prospects playlist, and all of the videos will be in there. And I have also made it way easier for you too, because I have time coded each segment in the description of those videos. So you don't need to waste time trying to scroll through and find the right starting point. Just go and look in the description. And I tell you where you need to jump to in each video in order to get all caught up on this top 10 prospects list. So please take the few minutes it, it takes in order to go and do that to get all caught up before hearing who comes in at number one today, even though it isn't much of a surprise. Uh, and while you're there, please make sure to go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks. Each and every follow really helps me out tremendously. So please take the quick second to hit that subscribe button for you, boy. All right, folks, without any further ado, coming in at number one on my summer 2022 Blackhawks top 10 prospects list. No surprise is forward Lucas Reichel, who we've already discussed a lot about here on the show today. Uh, but I will say, you know, I, I'm sticking with Reichel at number one, but Kevin Korchinski, man, gave him a run for his money. And I really had to think about which one of those two I wanted to come in at number one. But ultimately, I stand by Lucas Reichel as the top prospect in the Blackhawks organization. Well, Kevin Korchinski did some amazing things in training camp and in his few games of preseason action. Lucas Reichel has just been more consistent and more established as a professional player. I don't think there's any debate that Kevin Korchinski is the guy with the higher upside, but I think Lucas Reichel is more of a surefire thing. Like there are still some, some areas where Kevin Korchinski needs to grow at in order to become an NHL or like, I don't think at 18 years old, he's ready to go and play consistently for the Blackhawks. If they needed him to, he could probably be in there, but I don't think he's in a situation where he could thrive. And if Lucas Reichel was inside the top six for the Blackhawks this year, I think he'd be uh, putting up some pretty good numbers, especially if he'd be playing with guys like Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. So I kind of decided to value what Lucas Reichel has already done compared to what we think Kevin Korchinski could do. And that's why I have Reichel coming in at number one. But uh, his skill set, skill set, even though he didn't make the Blackhawks roster out of camp, is still undeniable. I mean, a really great playmaker and super creative with the puck on his stick. You feel like feel like he's going to be producing on every shift the way that he's able to move the puck and find players for fine scoring opportunities. I do think he needs to work on his shot a little bit more. I feel like he's kind of been a pass first player thus far in his career. And if he can add a strong shot to his arsenal, that's going to make him all the much, all the more dynamic once he comes up to the NHL level. But uh, I love his creativity. I love his speed. He's a really good skater, can get up and down the ice. He's good on the back check as well. He's definitely gotten more confident and sturdier on his skates. He's harder to take the puck off of than he was just a year ago. And I think those types of things are really going to make an impact for a forward like him who needs to be playing with the puck in order to have success. So I'm still super high on Lucas Reichel. I think he's going to have a massive year down with the Rockford Ice Hogs. We should see him up with the Blackhawks at some point this year, and 
with the patient approach that he's being given, um, hopefully that's just going to help ripen him a little bit more. And when that day does come, when he becomes a full-time NHLer and leaves Rockford in the rear view mirror for good, then he'll be ready to come up and be, make an impact just right away and be someone that can, uh, be a leader of this new young group for the Chicago Blackhawks. And I feel like Lucas Reichel can be that. I mean, the Hawks haven't had a forward prospect like him in quite some time. And um, I think everyone's really excited to see what he can do. Most people feel like he has the skill set and has the ability to be a really solid player one day. And I feel the exact same. Everything we've seen from Lucas Reichel, he gives us no reason why we shouldn't be confident in him. The way he plays the game, again, I've referenced how he's able to keep up at the high pace. He reads plays really well, has a great passing instinct, so creative, a spark plug who can get up and down the ice. I think he is going to be a pretty solid defensive player when it's all said and done too with the way he's able to fly up and down. I'm sure that's something that uh, he's been working on with both the Blackhawks and the Ice Hawks coaching staff since he has kind of come over here to North America. But yeah, I think it's going to be a really big year for for. Lucas Reichel down with the Rockford Ice Hogs. He's going to be the man. They're going to be leaning on him heavily. And uh, we'll see how long, whether or not he ends up playing there for the full year or if the Blackhawks need some help at the NHL level. Either way, I think it's a good scenario for Lucas Reichel to be in. And I'm ready for this kid to be a stud and make an impact for the Chicago Blackhawks. I'm really confident in Lucas Reichel. And that's why I have him at number one on my Blackhawks summer 2022 top 10 prospects list. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Wednesday, September 5th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Thank you all again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks right now, wherever you get your podcasts and go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, you got to be sure to go and check out the Locked On NHL podcast to get all caught up on everything that went down in the NHL offseason. It's free and available on all platforms, so be sure to go and check out Lockdown NHL right now, wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you all for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on my uh, on my Twitter account, at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account, at Talk and Hockey, for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.